Hello guys, this is Kaz with Elevate Your Craft and welcome to episode number 27 of the podcast. In a recent vlog, I talked about rope length and how important it is in setting yourself up for success in your jump rope training. In today's episode of the podcast, I want to talk about another aspect of your rope that is important to the effectiveness of your training, and that is the rope type. I'll go over the different types as well as where they best fit in when considering your goals. Initially, I just thought a rope was a rope and didn't give much thought to the different functions that they can serve, but it turns out that they can have a significant impact on your training. The most important thing to consider first is what you want to achieve. Are you a first-time jumper just looking to get your bearings? Do you have the basics down, but now you're looking to further develop your quickness? Are you training for a particular sport? Or do you want to put focus on conditioning the upper body when jumping? All of these questions are important and can be most effectively achieved using different ropes. It's important to keep in mind that while one rope may be more effective at achieving a particular goal, you are not limited to that one only. Some ropes are more versatile than others, but don't feel like you are locked out completely unless you have a particular rope. For example, while a speed rope is more conducive to achieving multiple under jumps, you could perform a double under with a weighted handle rope. Progress will likely be slower and more difficult, however it can be achieved. The trouble comes when you're looking to reach advanced and elite levels where you need every advantage that a particular rope offers. So getting into the different types of ropes, I'll start off with the heaviest, then get lighter and lighter, and at the end of the list, offer a bit of insight into ropes for advanced training. Number one, heavy or weighted handle ropes. These ropes can be made of rubber or heavy plastic. And this effect can also be mimicked by using conventional material for the rope, but adding weight into the handles. And these ropes add an upper body conditioning effect to jumping. They're not meant for speed, and two rotations per second is likely the max that will be achieved. If the handles are weighted and use a standard PVC rope, greater speeds can be achieved. However, more and more stress is placed on the wrists, forearms, and shoulders, so caution is recommended. Similarly, I wouldn't recommend a heavy rope for beginners because of this undue stress at a time when developing technique should be the main concern. A standard resistance training regimen would likely serve better in this purpose. I also wouldn't recommend this rope if you're looking to improve quickness or agility. It is best used by those that have a good grasp on technique and simply want to add more upper body resistance to their jumps. Number two, the leather rope. The leather rope has been a staple in the boxing world for a long time. And while they do rotate more efficiently than heavy ropes, greater effort is still required as compared to a PVC rope, for example. That being the case, greater speed can be achieved using a leather rope, however, still does not match the likes of a proper speed rope. A leather rope will wear and fray over time, so it will likely need to be replaced more frequently as compared to other ropes. It's recommended that they be used indoors only. They also tend not to be adjustable, so it's important to buy a rope that is most suitable for your height. Overall, this rope is effective for conditioning purposes and of moderate speed is the goal. Number three, the beaded rope. This one is one that you likely saw during the elementary school days or even kids using them in a local park. These ropes are constructed often with cheaper materials, although better ropes with beads can be used for performance purposes. This allows the crowd to see a bit uh, better as uh, the rope rotates. And in its construction, there are plastic segments placed around the rope, usually in alternating colors. This adds the durability necessary to withstand jumping outdoors on rough surfaces like cement. And because of this added weight, beaded ropes are not built for high speed or improving hand or foot quickness, although the weight can make rotation slightly easier, and this can be useful for beginner jumpers. This rope is best used by beginners looking to learn the basic technique, although it must be noted that the plastic segments will degrade over time, especially if used outdoors, so it's important to replace the rope to prevent beads from rocketing off during jumps. Number four, the PVC licorice rope. 
And this rope is very commonly seen in schools or gyms and uses plastic handles with a PVC rope mounted inside. They come in various colors and are more often than not non-adjustable. There really isn't a standard for how thick the rope is, so some can come slightly thicker than others, which will create more drag on rotation. These ropes are versatile and can be used by beginners and intermediate level practitioners. Speed and quickness can be developed, although not at the level of PVC speed ropes built for that purpose. Furthermore, the fact that the rope is mounted inside the handle will create friction, impeding maximum speed of the rope. It will make omnidirectional swinging more difficult, thereby greater potential for tangles, and also create further wear. The durability of these ropes is strong and can be used indoors as well as outdoors. However, rougher surfaces will cause greater wear over time. Overall, I would say the PVC rope is a great choice for beginners. Uh, they are light, durable, versatile, and can reach greater levels of speed than the ropes previously discussed. This gives the rope longevity in that it can be used to progress for a longer period of time before having to switch to a different rope. One thing to keep in mind is they're generally non-adjustable, so it's crucial to find a rope that is best suited to your height. And check out episode number 14 of the podcast for some guidelines on that. Number five, cable ropes. These ropes use a steel cable, either bare or coated in nylon, and are, are built for speed and speed alone. They can achieve very high rotations, upwards of four to five rotations per second. These speeds aren't necessarily higher than those of a thin PVC. However, the thinness of the rope, the overall lightness of the handles, are very conducive to high-speed training. These benefits, however, may not outweigh the drawbacks or perceived drawbacks of using a steel cable rope. Steel ropes have much less elasticity, limiting their versatility. These ropes are not recommended for tricks, especially crossbody variations. It's recommended that they only be used indoors because rough surfaces will tear the nylon, if applicable, and wear out the rope. Even if used indoors, the durability is often less than PVC ropes, making the need for replacement more frequent. Finally, steel ropes are prone to causing injury because of the nature of the rope and intensity of training. Because of this, I would not recommend them for beginners. I made the mistake of using a steel rope early in my training and suffered many painful moments because of it, often resulting in lashes that took days to heal. Having a strong technique and a desire to improve speed and power jumping should be a prerequisite of using steel ropes. And number six, ropes for advanced level training. There are certain attributes of a rope that need to be taken into consideration when choosing one for advanced level training. The first is the actual rope. Based on what I've discussed so far, a thin PVC rope is, I feel, the best choice. They're suitable for high speeds and trick-based training. They're light, durable, and create minimal drag on rotation. The second is the mounting system. The best ropes will have an external bearing mounting system, which drastically reduces friction, allows for omnidirectional movement of the rope, and makes for easy adjustment. These attributes allow for smooth movement in rope transitions, cross-body movements, and overall a smoother, quicker rotation of the rope. External bearings also allow for the highest speeds that can develop elite level quickness and agility. The third are the handles of the rope. In general, handles should be light with some sort of grip allowing for better handling, even in the sweatiest of situations. Depending on one's goals, the size of the handle also has an effect. Speed ropes generally have a short, very light handle that put less resistance on the wrists, forearms, and shoulders. This allows the practitioner to focus on speed and endurance. Conversely, handles built for cross training or cross body trick focus will be longer and slightly heavier. They are meant to be held lower on the handle, which allows for greater distance when the arms cross the body. However, this puts more stress on the wrists, forearms, and shoulders. Knowing this, it's important to consider which scenario fits your goals best. Alternatively, like me, you can have all different types of ropes in your arsenal for when you want to change up your training. 
Just keep in mind, when switching ropes, you will have to adapt to how it is meant to perform, so there will be a period of adjustment. So don't let that frustrate you. For myself, a rope with long handles and a white PVC rope is my go-to. Um, I tend to prefer trick-based training with a lot of cross-body variations, so this rope works best for my goals. And just the red with a white rope just kind of fits my personal preference. I also enjoy the extra stress that a long handle puts on the wrists and forearms because it helps develop grip strength. I do, however, have multiple types of rope, so my training tends to be quite comprehensive. And just a few things on rope maintenance and care. It's best not to tie ropes around the handles, coil them too tightly, or store them in lower or very high temperatures. With PVC, it's best to hang them off a hook or loosely coil them. An exception is if you're using a PVC rope with weighted handles. The rope can elongate or weaken due to the extra weight of the handles if hanging off of a hook, so it's best to loosely coil it. PVC and steel cable ropes should be stored at room temperature. If they're left in temperatures that are too hot or cold, it can alter the shape of the rope or cause a break during use. Steel ropes are especially vulnerable to kinks or breaks if not stored properly, so it's best they be coiled and stored in some sort of protective casing. Leather ropes are prone to wear, so it's best to loosely coil them. Heavier ropes can kink with excessive bend, so it is best not to hang them from a hook, and they're better off um, for a loose coil. Finally, when using specialty ropes, always be sure that the bearings and rope are secure. The parts will wear over time, so it's important to replace them when needed to keep the rope in top condition. And when I think about it, it's funny that before I, I really took jump ropes seriously, I didn't think there was much at all to it. I just assumed a rope is a rope, and it didn't really go beyond that. Knowing what I know now, however, I can honestly say that taking some of the factors that I've discussed into consideration had a dramatic effect on my goal setting and overall success. To close off, I just want to say that so much of anything is your mindset and how dedicated you are. With jump rope, it's no different. I went through so much frustration in my early days of training, and I still do get frustrated sometimes now, but it's for a much shorter period of time, and I know how to deal with it. Part of mitigating some of this frustration is setting yourself up for success as best you can, and choosing a rope most suitable for your goals is a great start. Just a reminder, uh, for some guidelines on finding the right rope length for your height, check out episode number 14 of the podcast. It is also in the transcript for that episode, which is on the website. In episode number two of the vlog, I talk about rope length and demonstrate a trick that can be used to evaluate whether a non-adjustable rope is suitable for your height or to measure out a new rope for your adjustable setup. The vlog can be found on the Facebook page, YouTube, or the website. You can also find various videos demonstrating different tricks and routines that I showcase. Be sure to follow on Twitter at EYCKAS. The Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes handles are Elevate Your Craft, all one word. And the website is www.elevateyourcraft.net. Thanks very much, guys, and I'll check you next time.